it's too early to know whether Tesla will amount to an entire chapter or a mere footnote in the annals of automotive history, but the company's Model S will leave a record here at Car and Driver. We've embarked on our first full-length long-term test of a battery electric car. We previously conducted a four-month test of a 2011 Nissan Leaf. Over the coming months, the 2015 Tesla Model S B85 D will cover 40,000 miles, logged no more than 250 miles at a time between battery charges. Concerns among the staff that the Tesla's stay would stretch well beyond that of a gas-willing vehicle have rapidly evaporated, though. Our Model S racked up 5,262 miles during its first two months. If it seems like we're late to the Tesla party, know that it wasn't for lack of effort on our part. Despite invitations in earlier years, Tesla only provided a Model S for our annual 10 best evaluation this past September, at which time the electric car promptly earned a spot on our list of the greatest cars on sale today. 40,000 miles in a Model S will complete the picture of the Tesla experience, offering new insight into ownership and the car's long-term reliability. For reasons both practical and hedonistic, our long-term car is the top-performing model SB85D. Its standard all-wheel drive will help us plow through the winter months, and the large, 85 kWh battery pack eases the range anxiety that comes with trying to accumulate 40,000 miles on the odometer in a timely manner. Of course, we were also wooed by Tesla's claim that the P85D can hit 60 miles per hour in 3.1 seconds. The P85D steep, $105,670 base price set the tone as we ran down the options list. Accordingly, our Model S is fitted with every available feature, save for the executive rear seating package. It is outfitted with a leather dashboard, a micro seared headliner, carbon fiber trim, a small lip spoiler, 21 inch wheels $4,500, and $1,500 in red paint. The $4,250 autopilot package adds adaptive cruise control, land keeping assist, self parking, and automatic high beams. Next generation front seats at a cost of $3,500, have earned high praise from our drivers for being better sculpted than the standard seats. Our car is also equipped with a 12-speaker stereo, an air suspension, a panoramic glass roof, a heated steering wheel, heated second-row seats, and rear-facing third-row seats. The optional dual onboard chargers allow us to add range at up to 58 miles per hour when we hook up to a 240 volt, 80 amp circuit. All in, our Tesla Model S B85D carries a sticker price of $136,720 before the $7,500 federal tax credit, our most expensive long term ever, not to mention the most powerful. With the P85D's combined 691 horsepower rating, we ultimately intend to take full advantage of the dual chargers by installing a dedicated 100 amp circuit in the car and driver garage. For now, we primarily charge using our existing 240 volt, 30 amp connector, which provides a full charge in about 12 hours. This setup also meters the amount of electricity that's delivered to the car so we can measure true energy consumption, including the parasitic losses of the charging process. To date, our Model S has consumed an average of 47 kilowatt hours of electricity per 100 miles, equal to 72 mpj. The EPA rates the P85D at a combined 93 mpj. Although the agency doesn't consider the inefficiencies in the charging process. While we aren't surprised to miss the EPA's mark, we were frustrated when we couldn't replicate Tesla's performance claims, so much so that we tested the Model S on two separate occasions. The best we managed was a 3.3 second run to 60 mph, 
to tenths behind the factory figure, and an 11.8 second quarter mile sprint. Our driver also noted that acceleration fades with back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back full on runs, especially at triple digit speeds. Cornering and braking numbers fall right in line with those of the Sport Sedan standard bearers. Even though our staff has driven Teslas on multiple occasions, the Model S experience still feels novel. It's not just the smooth, silent acceleration or the act of plugging in every time you park that makes the Tesla so different. The Model S is full of idiosyncrasies, chief among them just how many switches and buttons have been condensed into the sprawling 17-inch touchscreen. You tap or drag a finger to pop the door locks, slide the sunroof, and warm the heated seats, both front and rear. There is no driver involvement in powering the car on. You simply get in with the key in your pocket, press the brake pedal, shift into drive, and whir away to your destination, usually quite rapidly. As we've yet to tire of the Tesla's full zoot insane mode setting. It's less simple, though, when your destination is farther than the EPA rated 253 mile range. Online editor Alex Stocklose claims the longest trip to date, traveling 1,600 miles round trip between Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Alton, Virginia. Tesla's trip learning software led him circuitously through Washington. DC rather than the more direct, southeasterly route from Detroit in order to utilize Tesla's free superchargers, where he stopped to recharge at roughly 100 mile intervals. At one point, the car lost confidence that it would make it to the next charge point and ordered him to backtrack 20 miles to a supercharger he had already passed. Stocklose summed up the experience thusly. The Tesla is a great road trip car that requires too much forethought and waiting to be good at road tripping. That won't slow us down much, though. There are bound to be several more long journeys on the way to 40,000 miles in our 2015 Tesla Model S P85D. What we like, the novelty of driving a Tesla Model S P85D has settled into normalcy. After more than 10,000 miles, we're no longer euphoric about the stealthy, snappy acceleration of 691 electric horsepower, nor are we as bemused by the prospect of an epidal driving. In this case, though, familiarity hasn't bred contempt. We remain impressed by the Model S's performance, luxury, and real-world usability. Life with a Model S is notably easier today compared with when we took delivery in April 2015. In September, our local power company dropped the new electrical line to our Ann Arbor office, providing enough power to charge our Model S at 240 volts and 80 amps. We can now add 58 miles of range per hour of charging, and if we're truly in a rush, there's a newly opened supercharger less than three miles from our office. By passing the onboard charger with direct current at up to 400 volts pumps in electricity at a rate of hundreds of miles per hour. Tesla's network of 227 and counting supercharger locations in the United States now includes three in Michigan, with a fourth scheduled to come online in our home state by the end of 2015. While electricity still isn't as convenient as gasoline, our charging times are shrinking and the area our Model S can reasonably reach is growing. Our Model S has also grown smarter. The latest software, version 7.0, introduced new semi-autonomous driving features like hands-free lane keeping, automatic lane changing, and automated parallel parking. Tesla's autopilot isn't flawless. But compared with the systems from Mercedes-Benz and BMW, it does a better job of staying centered in its lane, tracking around bends, and allowing the car to cruise for longer periods without driver input. What we don't like, not only is Tesla prohibited from selling cars here, but Michigan law prevents Tesla from working on customers' cars within the state at company-owned service centers or using its roving ranger team.
Our nearest service center is 180 miles away, just outside of Cleveland, Ohio, so repair work means the car is gone for days at a time. Several drivers have opined that the Model S is at least one size too big to be practical. With a footprint larger than that of an Audi S8, it can be unwieldy on city streets and in parking garages. Solar commuters lament that a portion of the car's electric range is squandered carrying around so much extra mass. I'd prefer everything at 9 tenths, performance, size, price, and interior space, noted technical director Don Sherman. In other words, Tesla's smaller and cheaper Model 3 can't get here soon enough. And Tesla whiffed on storage. Despite the spacious and airy interior, there isn't a good place to stash small items. There are no door pockets, and the cup holders occupy the same space as the drivers and passengers in board elbows. The low, shallow band between the front seats allows phones and sunglasses to slide around at every corner and stoplight and is difficult to reach. The single slot for small items just below the giant touch screen is good only for soft items. Every time you heartily tap into the Tesla's forward thrust, anything in that cubby is launched into the cabin. Tesla sells an accessory center console with additional cup holders and a phone dock through its dealers, but who wants to pay $600 for something that should be standard on a $100,000 car? What went wrong? We spent $552 to buy and install a new Michelin Pilot Sport PS2 after we sacrificed a tire to the Michigan road system just a month into our test. At 5,500 miles, we suffered a cracked windshield, and Tesla shipped a replacement to our local installer. We spent $945 for the new glass and installation. A few nagging issues convinced us to send our Tesla to Ohio for warranty work with 9,400 miles on the odometer. The roof rack flaps frequently flipped up at speed, and a clicking noise occasionally came from the passenger side footwell area during moderate acceleration and braking. But the real impetus for the service visit was an irritating squeak caused by the driver's seat rubbing against the center console. Our car was retrieved by a Tesla agent and trailered to Cleveland, where technicians fixed the roof rack covers and torqued the suspension bolts, although the shop couldn't replicate the clicking that we reported. That seems to have done the trick, as the suspension is now as silent as the powertrain. Tesla's team was less successful with the driver's seat. The technicians determined that our seat's frame was bent and installed a new seat only to discover that that one had internal problems, as well. The shop ordered another but returned the car to us because it wasn't due to arrive for several weeks. We're still waiting to schedule a return visit to have the seat installed. Where we went, aside from one 1,600 mile road trip to Virginia, We've stayed relatively close to home with our Model S trips to the Lake Michigan shoreline and northern Michigan are now significantly easier thanks to the new supercharger in Grand Rapids. We've also made multiple trips to Chicago and back by way of the supercharger stations. More important is the fact that the Model S can go home with any car and driver staffer on a given night. Thanks to its large battery pack. The Model S can easily cover a 100-mile round-trip commute on a single charge with range to spare for a trip to the grocery store or soccer practice. It's the only electric car on the market with enough range to accommodate a typical workday.